for the kind introduction and also for the organization of this meeting. <clears throat> so we are approaching the last day, so most of the topic uh, has been already explored. So let me open um, this uh, uh, opportunity to talk about uh, uh, the detection of magnetic excitation for the search of uh, uh, axions. So to introduce the problem, <clears throat> Oops, let me see. Okay. So to introduce the problem, let me quote this uh, uh, fundamental idea. Um, so the basic idea uh, dates back uh, uh, 30 years ago, in which they proposed that uh, the action of the axon <clears throat> can be equivalent to a magnetic field that can be felt by a spin system, and in this way, we expect to have a spin excitation due to the interaction uh, with the axions. <clears throat> so the experiment was uh, realized uh, several years uh, later, so a few years ago, and uh, was presented by Claudio Gatti also in this uh, conference. So let me just refresh uh, the, the, the basic set up so we have a magnetic target that is constituted by a collection of sphere of yttrium iron garnet the uh, wike in a microwave cavity and uh, the wall system is inserted uh, in a strong magnetic field so when the axon can so they excite uh, the magnetic system the magnetic system is coupled to the microwave cavity and eventually a, a microwave photons come out from the cavity and can be detected by uh, a superconducting electronics, I would say. So the limit, so with this experiment, they put uh, an upper limit for the detection for the coupling between axon and electrons so that was established to be of the order of 10 to the minus 11. That is unfortunately quite far from the expected uh, uh, value from the standard model. So we really have to improve uh, the system and this experiment uh, and possibly to have new idea, to bring new idea how to uh, really gain uh, four order of magnitude. So first of all, uh, the main limitations, so let me see if uh, this work. So we can try to, uh, for instance, increase the number of spin, this uh, uh, bold N that we have over here. So in practice, if we have a thousand and thousand of this uh, magnetic sphere, so uh, we can uh, uh, decrease the limit, but we have to maintain uh, the um, uh, lifetime, uh, the coherence lifetime uh, of, the, of the world system, of the magnetic system, and possibly also reduce the uh, noise uh, from the electronics. So in practice, this is not very uh, um, uh, realistic because, uh, I mean, uh, to order order of magnitude in the number of spin, we really have to have uh, uh, um, a huge number of spheres. So we have to think to some uh, geometry and to uh, new ideas. So uh, by talking with the colleagues, so we uh, uh, want to explore the possibility to use a planar geometry. Uh, so let me explain a little bit of this and uh, uh, see if we may have some advantage in using uh, uh, a planar geometry. So to be more explicit, uh, we are going to use uh, a superconducting circuit, a superconducting resonator, planar resonator like this. And we put on top, and let's say we put on top a bulk uh, magnetic system. So the geometry is also shown here. So the main advantage of this scheme is that we can use uh, uh, all the tricks or some tricks uh, for circuit uh, quantum electrodynamics. But uh, since we want to have a bulk magnetic system, we still need to have, a, let's say, a bulk disk on top of the, of the uh, resonator. Eh? Um, so one advantage, for instance, is that we can have a, a, a small volume for the coupling between the microwave and the magnetic system. And in this way, we can increase, for instance, the coupling between the microwave and the magnetic system. So that's an interesting opportunity because eventually this can lead to 
a strong coupling, but also to the, as I will show, to the ultra strong coupling uh, uh, regime. It is a very interesting regime. Uh, if we are able to maintain uh, uh, this geometry and the same performance that I showed you before, uh, this geometry here is uh, um, scalable. So the main goal is to make uh, all this uh, device uh, um, and repeated uh, by lithography and make full uh, scalability. Uh, so that's the main goal. Uh, so the simplest idea is to repeat many, many times. Uh, so to have uh, many resonators like this, many units like this, in which we have a, a resonator, uh, independent resonator. Of course, we may expect to have some dispersion between uh, the frequency of the resonator, but uh, for lithography, we can uh, do as, uh, as uh, uh, best as we can. And, uh, and uh, we can also think to, so the basic idea is to use an identical resonator in first instance, but we can also uh, tune a little bit the, the frequency of the resonator and uh, think, for instance, to have a multiplexing uh, readout that can broaden the, 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 the bandwidth uh, for the detection in a very practical way and uh, everything on, uh, on, uh, on a planar geometry on, uh, on a chip. Uh, if we want to speculate a little bit, the planar ge geometry also allows to direct or to change, uh, let's say, the direction of the magnetic target uh, with respect to the direction of the uh, axon winds and uh, to change also and to play also uh, uh, with the direction of the static magnetic field. So in principle, uh, we introduce uh, one uh, uh, degree of freedom, uh, if you want, uh, uh, to the system, uh, one more degree of freedom of the system for the sensitivity to increase the sensitivity of the detection. Um, another interesting uh, opportunity is to tune also, so far I talk about independent uh, unit, but we can also, uh, by playing just with the geometry, we can also think to couple the magnetic system in different way with the long range uh, dipolar coupling, uh, or just by touching uh, the, the sphere, the disc uh, one to another, and so to play with the exchange uh, coupling uh, between the magnetic system. So in other words, uh, the, 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 the Hamiltonian of the system, it looks like uh, uh, the, 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 an array of uh, resonators uh, with, let's say, let's assume that we have a slightly different frequency, but almost identical frequency, a collection of uh, uh, magnetic system like this, and then uh, the, 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 the additional degree of freedom is the coupling uh, uh, by the uh, magnetic systems besides the coupling uh, through the photons. So that's um, also an interesting uh, uh, opportunity. So let uh, since uh, we have in the audience our uh, uh, theoretician friends, so this also came back to the main idea of our joint uh, uh, European project, uh, the Supergalax, uh, and our uh, uh, theoretician, our theoretical uh, group also, they study a very similar problem in which in a completely different uh, context uh, with an array of the superconducting qubit. But if you look to the Hamiltonian, actually the, 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 the Hamiltonian uh, uh, looks pretty much similar for the, uh, uh, the two arrays uh, of, the, of, the, of the system. And the interesting feature that they already predict is, uh, for instance, a refocusing uh, uh, that is due to the, um, uh, uh, the collection of this, uh, the, 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 the coupling between uh, these arrays of the, of the of spin system of, the, of qubit, uh, but also the, uh, in, uh, the possibility to achieve the Eisenberg limit by uh, playing uh, also with the correlation between uh, this uh, uh, spin system. So, okay, that's, uh, uh, let's say so far, uh, the motivation to, to go a little bit further to explore this geometry. So let's see how far we can go from the experimental part. So in the next uh, slide, I will discuss uh, our approach to, uh, in practice, uh, realize the geometry here. And uh, I will discuss the first, uh, the resonator, the superconductive resonator, a planar resonator that we uh, realize, and secondly, different possibility for the magnetic system. 
And then at the end, I would discuss a very interesting opportunity to go in the very strong, uh, ultra strong limit uh, for the coupling between photons and uh, uh, magnetic system. So let's start with implementation. So our approach is to use uh, uh, a commercial YBCO, superconducting YBCO films. Uh, so uh, YBCO is not much used for device, but I would say that uh, uh, it, it is a very good superconductor to realize the resonators because uh, it, it's particularly ideal to work with the magnetic system since uh, is very resilient to the uh, magnetic field. Here you can see that we can achieve uh, 10 to the four uh, um, quality factor and the, this quality factor uh, stay is essentially maintained also in very, very strong magnetic field, uh, order of uh, seven, eight Tesla we test and uh, the quality factor is still there. It's still a very pretty good. Also in temperature is very good. Another interesting opportunity is the possibility to reduce by lithography the size of this resonator in order to make it very, very compact and to focus the electromagnetic wave in the very confined and very small uh, volume. Uh, and so you can see here a different, uh, we test a different uh, width of the uh, uh, resonator. Uh, just in this week, we use uh, also, we are testing another geometry that is even more interesting, and that is called the, uh, what is called the anapole geometry for this resonator, for instance, uh, here we have uh, two very, very sharp uh, um, uh, resonant peak uh, with a huge quality factor of the order of 10 to the 4. And the electromagnetic wave is confined in a very, very small volume of few microns. So huge uh, um, uh, electromagnetic wave in a, in, a, in, a, in a very small value that is useful for uh, achieve the, 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 the strong coupling uh, regime. So that's the geometry for um, uh, the resonator. Uh, we just start to put uh, the yttrium marion garnet, the sun sample of yttrium marion garnet on top of our uh, planar resonator. The, these are very preliminary tests. This is just a thin film, a thick film of yttrium um, marion garnet uh, the, with no particular shape. So the, the, the line weight is not uh, exceptional. But you can see that the coupling with our uh, resonator is already very, very strong. Yeah? And uh, the cooperativity is very, very strong. And you can see that the true polaritonic branch uh, between the photons and, uh, the, the, and the kitten mode uh, are uh, very well defined uh, in the, already in this uh, very simple experiment. Here I just report a summary as example in the literature, in which we have a bulk sample on top of the strip line and again, uh, good coupling. Uh, I just mentioned some advantages, some tricks that we can borrow from the spintronics. Uh, for instance, uh, in this experiment that now, and this technique that is now used in, the, in spintronics, uh, they use, uh, for instance, we can use uh, a spin current to inject a spin current in a WIG in order to refocus uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, get a very sharp line width by injecting uh, uh, a spin current uh, in, the, in the magnetic system. So that's, uh, uh, for instance, uh, another example of tricks uh, that we can borrow from the 2D uh, geometry into the spintronics uh, to, to exploit and to uh, keep under control the, the, the parameters that, uh, which are looking for. Um, uh, since I come from the uh, field of molecular magnetism, let me also show this uh, recent research, one from my group, another one from the uh, American one. Uh, so these are uh, two ferromagnetic uh, system, uh, molecular one, uh, so they are both uh, uh, Prussian blue uh, chlorinide of metal centers. And you can see that also in this case, uh, you can achieve a very high uh, coupling strength uh, with a, a very strong uh, coupling and uh, also very uh, uh, sharp line width uh, also in this case uh, of the vanadium uh, 
tetra <coughs> channel 80 lane in this case. So I would say uh, these systems are also comparable. They have also performance which are comparable with the inorganic system. They are also better if we want to have, if we are looking for, uh, in particular, nanostructure uh, systems. <coughs> Here, another example, another uh, mechanism. So a simple organic radical uh, already have a very sharp line width, and this is due to a completely different mechanism. It's not longer in order, but it's uh, what is called exchange narrowing. That is a, a typical phenomenon for molecular system, which uh, allow us to have a very sharp uh, line width. So uh, another possibility is to use a diluted magnetic system. So these are uh, our example, our test that we have made in vanadyl, vanadium oxide uh, system, a diluted system. So again, here the performance are very, very good. Of course, what we lose here is that a diluted system we lose in the concentration and in the number of spins. So probably for the action search, uh, they are not uh, um, perfect, ideal. Uh, let me also mention the, 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 the nitrogen vacancy, the possibility to use a nitrogen vacancy. Again, here they, they, they have an excellent performance, but they, they, we lose uh, several order of magnitude in the dilution of the system. Since I quoted this work, let me also show the importance of the, the, of the coupling between the magnetic system and the microwave. If we work in the weak field regime, we suffer the, the parcel effect that is the for our experiment. Uh, so that's why we need to go in the uh, um, strong coupling regime in order to, to have uh, what is called the, the cavity protection uh, for, the, for the narrow wing of the, of the line width. <clears throat> So this basically, this graph, it's uh, a little bit confusing, but uh, just uh, uh, summarize a little bit uh, uh, different materials. Uh, so the, the, this uh, diagonal line just show the limit between the weak and the strong coupling. So the conclusion is that in the, the, in the good regime, in the strong coupling regime, we may have a different possibility to use a different material to use. And uh, even more interesting uh, is to go is to go in the ultra strong coupling regime. The ultra strong coupling regime is uh, achieved when the coupling uh, is at least one tenth uh, of the working uh, frequency of the of the frequency of the cavity. So it's uh, in this uh, upper corner over here. So you see that uh, this uh, purple line uh, indicated different value reported for the. <clears throat> Ethereum Marion Garnet. And there are several examples, as I show in the minutes, uh, that uh, demonstrated that it's possible also to achieve uh, this uh, ultra strong coupling regime. Uh, as good introduction, uh, I, let me just quote this uh, review paper of Franco Nori on, on, on the, strong, uh, the ultra strong coupling regime. And the interest for this uh, regime, uh, that is a completely new regime that is not yet explored for the research of the Darmeta is, uh, is summarized in this, uh, uh, in this plot here. So in the ultra strong regime, what we have is, uh, first of all, we have, uh, 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 for instance, the ground state and also all the excited state are a combination are, uh, uh, the, uh, of them are uh, expressed as entangled state between uh, spin excitation and the photons, and so more than one photons. So naturally, this means that, uh, uh, um, first of all, uh, we have no linear interaction between the spin and, uh, and, uh, and the photons, and this has uh, some consequence. Uh, and uh, uh, secondly, the basic idea is that, that uh, for instance, the, 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 um, the ground state uh, is tightly bound uh, uh, within the cavity. So eventually we can think in an experiment in which the axon cam, it make a, a, a spin excitation, a magnetic excitation, and this is bound, uh, tightly bound uh, with, uh, with the photons. And the, all this system remain uh, within the cavity and uh, we don't have the, um, uh, requirement to use a, a microphoton detector. 
So eventually what we have learned in this week and the need to, to, to use electronics to detect the microwave is no more necessary uh, if we use a smart way to detect uh, this uh, excitation here. So that's a very interesting regime that is not yet explored uh, in uh, for the search of dark uh, matter. So let me first uh, just mention that there are already reports that we can achieve uh, this ultra strong coupling regime also for magnetic system microwave. So let me quote to this couple of works, uh, also this work by Michael Tobar that I just talked yesterday, in which we have uh, also different magnetic system uh, and uh, different geometry for the cavity for which we can achieve this regime. Also in a planar geometry uh, with a simple <clears throat> Uh, um, a magnetic uh, system with a permal loy, we can achieve. Uh, uh, we have a report also from the Russian group, from the Moscow group of uh, group of uh, Alexei Ustinov, uh, that is possible to achieve the ultra strong uh, regime. And so that's uh, experimentally has been uh, proven. This is a very uh, also interesting possibility yeah, to, um, to use. So how can we detect in this regime and now, uh, what is the schema for detection of, of the action in, in this regime? As I told you, we don't need to uh, uh, detect the, the photon directly, but uh, what we can use is the dispersive regime, um, is the dispersive uh, uh, readout uh, of, the, of this excitation. Uh, so let me put also this work that is uh, already mentioned several times during this uh, workshop. Uh, this uh, beautiful work, actually, we have uh, two works uh, uh, from this uh, group of uh, Nakamura, in which they show that uh, it's uh, possible to detect uh, a magnetic excitation directly by uh, a dispersive readout. So in this scheme, let me uh, briefly refresh. So we have a magnetic target in a mag strong magnetic field, a cavity that is inserted in the cavity. Actually, we exploit two modes of the cavity. One is coupled to the magnetic system and the other one to a superconducting qubit. So we have an effective coupling between the kitten mode and the qubit. Huh? And uh, uh, by this scheme, uh, they demonstrated that it's possible to detect a single magnetic excitation. So that's a, a very interesting possibility um, to the, uh, so a completely different schema because we, in principle, we don't need to detect uh, uh, directly the, the microwave photons. And, and this is a non demolitive readout of the, of the excitation. And so the, 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 the whole excitation remains in the, in the cavity for a very, very long time. So uh, in, in this line, uh, let me show our very recent resi uh, results. So we use a planar geometry, as I mentioned. <clears throat> Uh, let me also clarify that uh, most of our experiments are performed at the two Kelvin, so we use, uh, uh, so let's say we are not in the single photon regime, so we use many photons, but uh, essentially the physics uh, is uh, <clears throat> quite uh, uh, similar even uh, if the experiment we can speculate that the, the, uh, at least the, the, the time is coming uh, Hamiltonian uh, it's, uh, it, it's quite similar for the two systems and uh, here we just show that it's possible so instead to go to, to tune the magnetic field in resonance uh, that we tune the magnetic field the, 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 the magnetic system out of resonance and here I just show that it's possible to make very nice uh, spectroscopy of the magnetic system and, for instance, to resolve the hyperfine excitation of our uh, magnetic target also in the dispersive regime. So this is uh, also to show this is uh, uh, this uh, bring us uh, confidence that in practice uh, this uh, uh, dispersive uh, uh, readout, uh, the, the, the planar version uh, should look uh, uh, like this. So we have, uh, for instance, an array, if we combine uh, the two ideas that I discussed uh, in, uh, in this talk, if we combine uh, these two ideas, uh, so we actually have uh, an array of a magnetic target, uh, which are coupled to a, an auxiliary resonator, uh, and uh, this coupled to the 
uh, uh, superconducting qubit. Uh, and so by reading the superconducting qubit in a dispersive mode, we can uh, detect, uh, in, we can eventually detect uh, the uh, magnetic excitation without any, uh, uh, without destroying uh, the, 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 the magnetic excitation and reading directly the, the microwave photons. So we can also think, and uh, then I would conclude uh, to avoid uh, to uh, uh, avoid to use uh, this uh, superconducting uh, device uh, by using, uh, uh, for instance, a multi-mode uh, um, uh, cavity, and uh, but uh, then we need to introduce uh, some nonlinear terms. Huh? So we are just uh, uh, thinking about. Uh, uh, this uh, scheme here, and also also to avoid uh, uh, the the, um, the superconducting device. And this is a, a kind of results that we have if we use uh, uh, two um, uh, resonant frequency. So this led me to the conclusion. So basically, in this uh, 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 brainstorming, I would say, so not really that I presented some idea how to implement and uh, how to continue in the line, uh, one possibility to continue in the line of the search of uh, uh, action with a magnetic target by uh, exploiting the, the planar geometry of the circuit uh, uh, quantum electrodynamic uh, uh, systems. Uh, I showed that uh, this line, uh, uh, I showed preliminary results and some results in the literature, they showed that uh, this is possible, it's possible also to exploit uh, several tricks uh, of, the, the, of this uh, uh, geometry. And uh, uh, the main target is uh, possibly to have, to have a scalable system. And so the, the, the plan is to demonstrate that one uh, device is working, is performing at least has the, the experiment in 3D and then uh, demonstrate if that is possible or with a lithography is possible to think to have a, a full scalability of the system. Another possibility, another option is, uh, uh, is to use the ultra strong regime which provide uh, uh, a new regime of working uh, and uh, if this is combined with a, uh, a non-demolitive uh, uh, readout uh, can lead to a completely new scheme and hopefully to, to, to gain a several order magnitude in the sensitivity of the, of the apparatus. So with this, I would like to thank you and to thank my collaborator, Alberto Ghiri, Claudio Bonizzone and Samuel Cornia and uh, the Supergalax uh, project, a European project uh, that uh, provide a very nice uh, discussion and also some money to, to perform all this experiment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marco, for very nice and presentation. And the uh, talk is open uh, for questions or comments. If I may. Uh, so, yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the non-demolition uh, character of uh, detection this way, does it mean that it is possible to accumulate the signal from consecutive uh, axioms uh, so that uh, the sensitivity will increase? I guess so. In the ultra strong regime, you, well, it depends on the scheme uh, of the excited state. Right. So it depends if you have, uh, yeah, but the, 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 the excited states are a combination, are entangled, entangled state between uh, uh, several virtual photons and magnetic excitation. So we have to look more carefully at the spectrum of this. And, uh, but in principle, all these are bosons, so, so we can accumulate uh, everything in the cavity, in the resonators. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the main trick. Yeah, I agree with you that we can accumulate the, 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 the signal in the, in the resonator in this regime. And because we have a known demolition right. uh, measurement, so we don't, don't have to destroy the photons each time. Thank you. How they accumulate that depend on the spectrum of the system. So that I cannot tell you. I mean, we have to study more carefully the, the, the system. Okay. I see some question from Mikhail. Uh, 
Good morning. Th uh, Marco, thank you very much for a very nice talk. My question, short question, is about the application of organic materials. Uh, can you explain briefly what's the advantage of the organic materials with respect to another materials for the uh, application in, in your de uh, detector? Uh, we have, uh, as I showed, for instance, for uh, organic uh, uh, material, we have a different mechanism, which are typical for organics, uh, which make a very sharp line width. Huh? Uh, so this uh, we cannot normally get in uh, inorganic materials. But uh, I would say that uh, we don't know all these uh, experiments are made. Um, so there are specific features of the of the uh, organic material. Another possibility is to use, for instance, paramagnetic centers, uh, uh, which have a very controlled epifine uh, uh, resonance. So in this, in the broader sharp line width, we can control, we have, uh, we may have several lines uh, already in, uh, in resonance due to the epifine. So we have this kind of, uh, in many all this uh, uh, chemical engineering of the magnetic systems, uh, uh, which may provide uh, uh, the, the, some advantage that we normally no, don't have in uh, in, in organic uh, systems. So the, 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 the main problem is that uh, the, there are very few studies at the millikelvin region. So uh, that's we have to test more carefully. Thank you, thank you. And another possibility is that in principle, uh, uh, if you ask for one kilogram of organic system, that should be done, <laughs> can be done if you have a good chemist. Okay, thank another, you. Thank you. Another question from Mikhail. Uh, yes, a um, uh, very interesting talk. Um, it's, my question is, um, in the ultra strong coupling regime, um, your photon, so when we do an axion experiment, um, we want to increase our scan time is our main sort of parameter. And um, yet yeah, a dispersive readout could be interesting. Um, we can't, it's harder to tune the photon than it is the magnon. So what advantages do you see with, with uh, besides um, achieving a better to signal to noise ratio. Do you have any idea um, how, how well you can improve the signal to noise ratio? And, and what about scanning? Have you given any thought to scanning for the axion? Yeah, uh, yeah I, 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 uh, I see the point about the scanning. Uh, well, in principle, you are in the outer re of resonance. So you can scan uh, a, a larger, uh, band, uh, but uh, as you know, if you go far away from the resonance, then your signal gets uh, smaller and smaller. So uh, in principle, we can go inside the resonance for uh, uh, much more uh, for, uh, for instance, in our experiment, we have a um, so if you work at a few gigahertz, so we can have a bandwidth of uh, um, tens of uh, megahertz uh, uh, scanning. Uh, then, of course, uh, the, we decrease uh, the, the, the intensity of the signal and we lose the signal. And um, so that's uh, the, the, the main limit. About the, the, the sensitivity, the signal to noise, uh, ratio, uh, in principle, I don't know. My, my feeling uh, is, um, I would say like this, uh, I would try to avoid the electronics uh, as much as we can. Uh, so the limitation would not be the noise of the electronics in this sense. So the main limitation would be thermal noise, because of course uh, we always work at a finite temperature and uh, so the main limitation would be uh, that one. So it depends uh, how good is your uh, refrigerator, I would say, and not your uh, uh, electronics. Uh, there is this interesting work uh, from the group of uh, Zakowski that is here that uh, gives some hint on how to achieve the Heisenberg limit uh, by increasing the number of, um, of target, if you want. 
so we can uh, so my feeling that uh, so the goal will be to achieve uh, the very uh, quantum limit uh, with uh, this scheme huh? okay, thanks okay if we have no questions thank you marco again and um, for a nice presentation and i would like to 